Hey guys, David Vos here. Well, it snowed yesterday again. Uh, it didn't stick, but it's still cloudy. And it snowed a little bit more just a few minutes ago. Probably snow off and on another day or two. But it's not sticking. It's pretty warm out. It's a wonderful day here. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Friends, I've been thinking and pondering about this um, whole situation. Because we're saying it may start in spring, the, the Great Tribulation. And I think, okay... Just how clear is that? Is it really certain then? Are we certain about that? Or how certain are we? I guess I would put it. And in conjunction with that, I want to talk about that today. But in conjunction with that, I want to talk about this eclipse, total eclipse on April the 8th. Because people are saying that it has to do with the sign of Jonah and so forth. So we're going to see if that's accurate. And if I don't get that information in this video, if it takes too long going through the first part of it, we'll just make a part two. But anyway, I want to share with you Daniel chapter 9 and chapter 12 and so forth. And I also want to discuss whether or not or how certain we are they're going to sacrifice the red heifer and just what exactly does that mean? Does that tell us anything? Let's find out for sure. Well, at least reasonably sure. Is it actually true that Israel is going to sacrifice the red heifer this year at the time of Passover, around that time? There's actually a, some special day that they have to do it. And this is true of all of these things. For instance, and it's, it's funny because there's so many things to know. How many people know everything? Well, nobody. So it's hard to know all this stuff and realize this is all coming down. But you say, well, when would they do it? What time of the year would they do it? Well, it must be done in Passover time. Because to dedicate the temple is always done. And that's what this is. The red heifer is to dedicate and to cleanse. And you find this in the book of Revelation chapter 11, where it talks about the cleansing of the sanctuary. And then it's at that very moment that the 1,260 days goes forward. So the cleansing of the sanctuary is in spring on Passover. And that's when the 1,260 days begins. And that's how we, one way we know that the tribulation begins in the spring with the dedication of this new temple and this bringing back of sacrifices and, and, what 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 we'll find is in Daniel it actually calls it an abomination, because when Jesus looked at Jerusalem and said, "You, your house is left unto you desolate," he didn't say, "Oh, by the way, the devil's going to bring it back for a while, and then it'll be desolate." No, he says it will continue to lie desolate and upon the wing of abominations until the consummation or the time of the end. And that will be the last three and a half years, which is going to be the greatest woe and disaster the world has ever known. And Israel will be completely destroyed. And we know that Jerusalem will be destroyed in the 9th of Av, which is August, so sometime around the middle of August. So we know beyond any doubt in the Bible that Jerusalem, the final destruction, which is just as Jesus is coming back, which is the ninth of Ab or somewhere around, I don't know the exact date this year, but it's somewhere around the middle of August. But it won't be this year anyway. It'd be four years later from now. We know that's when Jesus returns, but we don't know what year now, right? Well, whenever they dedicate the new temple, it is also to cleanse the sanctuary, but also it is when they will bring in the abomination, which is some man who declares himself the divine being. Whoever this man is, he will declare himself deity. This man will say, I am deity. The only person that can do that is Yahweh. And I think that's the blasphemy is that Yahweh says, I am the only one. I am the savior. Remember again, Jesus said, and Jesus is the Lord, right? As powerful as Yahweh or his brother, the 
deity of vengeance. They're both I am's, right? And Jesus said, I have come in my father's name and you have not received me. But when he comes in his own name, as I've pointed out many times, the Bible, the Old Testament constantly points out that Yahweh wants you to know his name and he's coming in his own name to deliver us, to deliver his people. He never offers them eternal life, but he's coming in vengeance in his own name. And yet Jesus said, no, I am just like the Most High. I am in the Father, Father's in me, and ye are deities and the scripture cannot be broken. The blasphemy is that Yahweh thinks he's the divine being and he wants to have vengeance on all of us. But all we need to know is when they are going to sacrifice this red heifer. And we know then the beginning of the Great Tribulation. Well, again, just because they say they're going to do it probably doesn't mean they absolutely will. But I suspect since we've been watching everything they've been saying, they've had this whole thing planned out, Agenda 21, you know, and they're rolling it out on schedule. They said they will change over to a a new system of buying and selling that no one may buy or sell unless they have authority by the beast. That's what they're saying. And that's what the Bible says will happen. And on the 11th of March, they stopped insuring your money. They have said, I don't know, the, the, the head of the government control of the world organization, whatever they, I can't remember the, the word, you know, uh, Schwab guy and all the other Bill Gates people that get together in a little round table and make this stuff up. They have announced that before 2025, in other words, by the end of 2024, they are going to have a cyber attack. That's what they said. I don't know how they know that, right? Except that they have planned it. It could actually be an EMT or something. They've also talked about that, but they have announced that there will be a cyber attack which will collapse the market. Now, they're planning on doing that because they have to bring in a new world system and they need compliance. And if they get people to starve and to be hungry and there's no way out, there's no buying and selling and people say, well, who can battle the beast, right? Who can do battle with it? We've got to worship it. That's what they'll say. They'll wonder after the beast. The beast will bring them to their knees. He comes in as the savior and then they willingly worship him. But not until he dies and is raised from the dead in some way. And in a strange way, because they make an image to this beast, which is a government. And we know it's a man because there's a little horn that comes up on the beast and he has a mouth speaking blasphemies and he declares himself deity, as the Apostle Paul says. So, but the way it describes it in Revelation is that they make an icon and they bring it to life and give it a mouth so that it can speak. And then there's this false prophet that says that you have to bow down and worship the beast. But obviously the idol, because the beast has somehow gone and died and now he's come up out of the bottomless pit, see? He was and is not, but shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. A little bit like Jesus who was and is and shall come. So all we need to know is when are they going to sacrifice this red heifer? Now, here's what it says. It says, as of now, four of the heifers remain blemish-free, and according to Temple Institute rabbis, they hope to carry out the ceremony before Passover of 2024. Now, that's not conclusive, and perhaps that's why nobody knows the day and the hour. Maybe they'll last minute reschedule it for next year. But my problem with that is I don't see how we can go beyond 2028. Because we're going to establish that the Great Tribulation must begin in the spring around Passover time. 
And we know that the tribulation is three and a half years. So the tribulation ends not in the spring, begins in the spring, but it ends halfway, six months into the third year. So that would be in the fall. Well, the fall is the end of September. And that's past May 14th, 1948, when they became a nation. 80 years later, May 14th, 2028, too late. If you go all the way to September, you've gone over 80 years. So while that's not an absolute, because none of this is, it seems to me it can't go that far. And so I was thinking, well, now, wait a minute. Remember where Daniel says, not only is it 1,260 days, but there is this other 1,290. And happy is he that comes unto the end of the 1,335. So we got actual month or 30 days more to an event, which we don't know, and another month and a half to another event, which is the end. So I was thinking, okay, that's two and a half extra months. So if it has to end in the fall, and then from that point, we add the two and a half months to make the 1,335 days, which is until the end. It's interesting that it comes out in Christmas, the great purge, the birth of Saturnalius, the great, you know, chaos, the purge, the, the devil's running wild and no law and the sun is darkened and it's chaos and, and havoc and, and evil and destruction upon the earth. That makes sense. Well, if it had ended in the spring, we could go two and a half months. And I was saying, well, maybe we go all the way to May 14th from April 15th, which is the Passover. And you add two more months and two and a half months and you would maybe somehow come out to May. For, no, that's only like a month, not two and a half months. So I couldn't get that to work anyway, but we know it starts in the spring and has to end in the fall. And that last two and a half months has got to go beyond the fall to Christmas time. We have to say that must be kind of basically established unless there's something we don't know. Israel became a nation no later than May 14th, 15th of 1948. And so 80 years would have to be in May or in this spring sometime of 28. And going all the way to fall of 28 seems like it'd be too far. We need to make this clear. Since we know that this whole three and a half years has to begin in spring and end in the fall, then you count those two, ex, two and a half extra months from the fall Sukkot season the festival of Sukkoth. And it comes around Christmas time. And we couldn't have it around Christmas time, 2028, it's too late, beyond 80 years. So it would have to come around Christmas time, 2027. And the Great Tribulation then should start in the spring of 2024. And I'm going to show you some other things in Daniel that will blow your mind on all of this to, to get a perspective on what's really going on here. But it says, they hope to carry out the ceremony before Passover 2024. Only nine heifers have been sacrificed since the time of Moses until the destruction of the second temple in 70. Well, I think that's as clear as we're going to get it. I don't think we're going to get anybody to say, yes, we're going to do it. It's absolutely written in stone. But everybody's saying they're planning it. That's probably as conclusive as we're going to get on that. Now let me show you some other things. All right. I want to go over Daniel chapter 9 with you and go over a couple of points that I don't think very many people have understood. For whatever reason, I don't believe I really grasped or understood all of this maybe 10 years ago when I read it, or even five years ago, or a year ago. Now, I don't remember covering this and saying anything dramatically wrong or anything. I was aware of some of the things that we're about to talk about, but I didn't really understand the significance and how this would be so important to understand just a few, a few, few months ago or weeks ago. But as I sit here and I study this, I realize how clear it really is and why I, 
I don't know. It seems like there are certain individuals that come up with interpretations that aren't quite right. And then they get spread around and people believe that. And then invariably there's somebody else that comes along and says, no, that's not right. And they show this other thing. But nobody really knows who's right because only the highest scholar, and especially somebody who's done a lot of praying and sincere praying, but if a person even was sincere and had been praying 10 years ago, the Lord may not have shown him these intricate little details. But one thing that's been a controversy, we're going to go over here, as to whether or not in this chapter of Daniel, where it talks about, and it goes into chapter 11 and so forth and 12, but it talks about the last week of Daniel's 70th week. And we'll we'll read that here in a minute so you'll understand what that last week means of his 70 weeks, right? But there's this 70 weeks he talks about, 70 weeks of years. And then he, he says, Messiah shall come at the end of 60 and two weeks. So most Christians think, oh, okay, Jesus is going to come then. I don't know, for some reason, somebody at some point, I don't know who it was, had the idea that this Messiah was some other anointed person, perhaps the, the prince that is to come, because it mentions a prince who is to come, who will destroy the sanctuary and bring in the abomination. So some have thought that it's the Antichrist that comes at the last week and makes a covenant for one week. And this has been going around oh, a lot of Christians. It's kind of like the pre-rapture. They believe that it's the Antichrist is going to make a covenant with the world for a week and then break the covenant with Israel at the half of the week and cause sacrifice to cease. It's very important because if you believe that, then you, you'd have to believe that before Jesus could come, they'd have to rebuild the temple. The Antichrist would arise. They'd be doing sacrifices for three and a half years or something. Confirm the covenant, right? And then at the half of the week, he would renege and make himself deity. He's the Antichrist, right? And stop and make the sacrifices to cease. Now, these this interpretation probably came from the Jewish people because the Talmudic Jews, because the Judeans believe that there is going to be an abomination. They have the book of Daniel. They just don't believe anything about Jesus. They, they take Jesus out of the equation. He's not the Messiah. Well, if they really do that, they have a lot of problems anyway. First of all, the 490 years or 70 weeks run out right at the end of Jesus's day. So they'd have to accept Jesus as the Messiah if they did that. So they ain't going to do that. So they think it was the Antichrist. Well, they still got a problem because now we're 2000 years later. Even Christians have a problem because the, the 490 years runs out. And the last week would have to run out in about 33 Christ's error. Well, what they don't understand is that the book of Daniel focuses on the last half of Daniel's week. All the way through, it mentions it in depth. Like it gets a magnifying glass and takes a look at that last half of the week and, and discusses that in great detail in all the different chapters of Daniel 9 and 7 and, you know, 11 and 12 chapters. So if you notice, it says that he will cause sacrifice and gift offering to cease at the half of the week. But upon the wing of abominations, it shall lie desolate, I guess is what it says, until the consummation. If you understand, you know, you got to parse those words and, 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 you know, it's a little vague, but something's got to be here because even if you took it, that it was fulfilled with Titus Vespasian in 66 CE and lasted three and a half years till 70, that's still years after Christ uttered the prophecy. And if Christ is the Messiah, then it had to have, well, we know that it couldn't have gone that long. The 490 years ran out in about 30, 33. So we've got a problem unless you understand that when Christ died, there would be this long division to divide it. That might be what Jesus meant when he says, if he hadn't divided or cut that time short, as they translate it, but it really means to divide that time 
if you hadn't divided the, the last three and a half years and set it apart from the other 490 years, that no flesh would be saved. And so he divided it off somewhere. But it does appear from various verses through chapter 9 and 11 and so forth in here, you'll see several places where it seems to take that last three and a half years and say, we don't know when that's going to come, even though we know when all the other times are coming. We know when it begins from the going forth of the call to restore Jerusalem. And we know that it ends with the Messiah coming, according to Christians. Of course, Judeans don't want to believe that. They think it might be the, the, the wicked prince. If they, But most Ju Judeans do say, on one hand, it does mean the Messiah. It's just that they don't recognize Jesus. So I don't know how they get around all that. But I think it might be that, that amongst modern Christians, they've had this idea because of the Talmudic Judeans inspiring them. They do this a lot, like with Sitchin. He starts stories about Donikin and Domankowski and George Nori and Will Cock and all these people who are talking about people being abducted and all stuff. And it's just propaganda. And these are all Bavarians that do it. So I think it was a Bavarian that started this idea amongst Christians just to get us off that it was fulfilled in Jesus. Jesus was the Messiah and Jesus made the sacrifices to cease and renewed the covenant with the many for one week. Right? Because when Jesus came and he was baptized, he told them and he gave them a new covenant and he renewed it. But at the half of the week, Jesus caused sacrifices to cease when he died because he became the lamb for us, the sacrifice for us. And we no longer under any of these carnal ceremonies and, it, and they ceased. And, and, and effectively, they did cease very shortly after that when Jerusalem was destroyed in 70. But spiritually speaking, they had no efficiency once Jesus had died on the cross and he became a renewed or a new covenant. But then Jesus died and went away. And Jesus said, your house is left unto you desolate. And they said, well, when's the last three and a half years coming, Jesus? When are you coming back? See, that tells you that there's going to be some distance because when Jesus died, that fulfilled everything. All you got is three and a half more years. And they're saying, when's it going to happen? He says, well, you know, if it was going to happen consecutively, <laughs> then when Jesus died, it would have happened. And there have been people who have tried to say, well, it did happen all the way up till Cornelius was baptized by Peter. Somehow that fulfilled it. I've looked at that and that doesn't seem, that that's not the fulfillment of the prophecy. Because that last half of the week is important. It's when Antichrist arises. So no, all the things that the last half of the week are going to entail were not fulfilled by the time Cornelius was baptized. So that, that is false. But Jesus himself said, well, I'll tell you, I'm going to die and go away. And people are going to say, lo here and lo there. Here I am. I'm coming again. Because Jesus told him, I'm leaving. I'm coming again. When are you coming, Lord? Well, on into the future. They're going to lie desolate until the consummation. And when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, as spoken of by Daniel the prophet, then let them in Judea flee. Okay, that happened once when Nero sent Titus Vespasian, his general, in to besiege Jerusalem. And they surrounded it. And they were surrounded for three and a half years, and then it was destroyed on the ninth of Ab, as it always is. So there was terrible tribulation of three and a half years. That happened in a type of what is going to be a ladder. You don't believe me? Well, then why did Jerusalem come back again to fulfill prophecy? That's what this is about. And this is why Trump declared Jerusalem the capital exactly 70 years from 1948. And the prophecy then is being set up for this last three and a half years from this, when this Antichrist would, would come. Now, remember, if the Antichrist is what's being talked about as he shall confirm a covenant for one week, then many Christians believe that there, we, we, the end's not coming tomorrow or very soon because we've got to see the temple rebuilt 
the Antichrist arise. We've got to see all this sacrificing going on for three and a half years. And then there will be this sudden thing. And, and it could, that could be years away if, if we're going to wait around for this temple to be rebuilt. But it doesn't say that. In fact, it says there won't be any more temple. Jesus said, look, your house is left unto you desolate. It's going to be destroyed and be trampled upon until the consummation. And what's that? When the abomination is set up, not true sacrifices the right way or whatever, but literally that some man, I guess the devil enters into him like the devil did into Judas Iscariot. So the Judeans, the devil will enter into this the man that they will believe in because Jesus said, I've come from my father in my father's name and you didn't receive me. But when he comes in his own name, you will receive him. So they're looking for the Antichrist and they're going to believe it's the Christ. I don't know how this gets all twisted and tangled, but it's just that nobody really understands this. So they probably, when they're going to do this red heifer, think they're going to rebuild the temple and perhaps fulfill all this. And then the middle of it will be this big war and then their deity will save them and they'll have, at the end of the seven years, they'll have Yahweh's kingdom set up for eternity. But that's not what it says. If you understand that the Messiah already came and at the half of that week, he caused sacrifice and gift offering to cease. And upon the wing of disgusting things, it was just laying desolate until the consummation or the last 1,260 days when you see Jerusalem return when you see the fig tree blossom, that generation will not pass away. That nation, that's what it means, that nation. It was the birth of a nation. And when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, because it's not going to have a temple and sacrifices and glorious, wonderful things. It's going to have an antichrist who will declare himself to be Yahweh. And he will make a one world government. And Jesus is actually saying, that's the bad guy. This Jerusalem coming back, all this stuff, worshiping, that's the bad person. And the mark of the beast on your hand, your forehead, if you look at Exodus, that's the law of Moses. It's to take you away from grace and put you back under the law, which is the wrath. The only way you can get out of the wrath is to be a Christian. There is no condemnation in those who walk after Christ, who know that they are free, and we're not appointed under the wrath. Friends, when they sacrifice a cow on some altar and declare the efficiency of this as some kind of cleansing, they go back to the law. It's over for them. They have rejected the blood of Christ and have gone back to the deity of vengeance, which they cannot ever be cleansed with goats and in the blood of bulls, our Christian Bible tells us. And therefore the sin they have remains and the wrath is coming upon them. And I dare say you sacred names, Christians or Hebrew Israelism or whatever's going on out there with you guys, where you're going back to the law and you're celebrating the the this other resurrection of Jerusalem and all of this nonsense with the Judeans and how the Lord is blessing them and bringing them back. And you're putting yourself under a curse, my friends, please accept the blood of Jesus. Please get on your knees and pray and take your pride and toss it away. Just pour out your heart to the Lord and ask him to show you his grace. Because we are not under any of the law. We're under no part of the law. Those of you who want to be under law, do you not know it is slavery? So you've got to understand this very clearly. You've got to know who these players are or you're going to get a different conclusion. I'm going to read through this and show you the correct way to understand this. And after we get that, then we're going to realize we don't need to rebuild Jerusalem. It's already been lying desolate. It's going to continue to lie desolate. The revelation talks about a cleansing, but remember now we're cleansing it. We got a new covenant and we're cleansed by his blood and it's in heaven. And the last half of the 
Daniel's 70th week, the sanctuary is cleansed. So and essentially, since Christ died, the sanctuary has been cleansed in some way. And all of the true believers had the potential to go right straight in with boldness. But especially the last three and a half years, we're going to receive the latter rain. We're going to have the Holy Spirit in the upper room and the foundations of the house will shake. Because the angels are the reapers, my friends, and the wrath that's coming does not have any authority upon believers. So he says, in the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of Chaldeans, the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years where of the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. Now, remember, we're talking about only 70 years that Jerusalem would be desolate to pay for her sins. What happened? Right? What happened? It's been 2,000, you know, 600 years now. Well, or a little bit less than that. Well, initially, that's what Daniel thought. When is this thing going to be over with? Jeremiah said it'd be 70 years. Daniel witnessed the whole thing. And then Cyrus, the prophet, that Trump has been identified as the same one to fulfill things like Cyrus by the Israelis today and fulfilled Bible prophecy after 70 years in, a, in a, another fulfillment because these are types. This shows you that even the Judeans understand that the types have to be re-fulfilled at the end of the next age. So, Initially, it's just going to be 70 years to fulfill the fact that, that they have to pay for their Sabbaths. But then he says, down here, we'll forego all of the rest of that because we haven't got time to read the whole chapter. But basically, Daniel says, 70 weeks, and what's this all about? And the angel's like, well, let me tell you. It's not just 70 years, all right? But he says, 70 weeks of years are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city to finish the transgression. See, the transgressions finished when they murdered Jesus Christ. And that was 400 near, 490 years later, you'll see. And to make an end of sin. See, there's no more sin because Christ paid for everyone's sin. And the people that are going to pay in the judgment to come, you can't pay for something that's not being cured. The law of Moses was done away. There is no sanctuary. There is no sacrifices. You couldn't have been made clean for all these 2,000 years. So you either believe in Jesus and you're saved or you never did believe and you never received that salvation and now you're under the wrath. And it's to make reconciliation for iniquity. See, this is how we know that it ends with Jesus when he died on the cross because he reconciled us to his Father in heaven and to bring everlasting righteousness. Nobody did that but Jesus. Nobody even claimed to, friends, at the end of 490 years from the time that Daniel said this. Everybody knows that only Jesus fulfilled this. And we have all the testimony of the apostles and 2,000 years of Christianity. And to seal up the vision. So in other words, the vision sealed up now. It, it isn't over. Yeah, we're all saved. Those who want to. But it isn't over. The vision is going to be for the time of the end. To seal up the vision and prophecy. Because all prophecy. Even though it may have been had some smaller fulfillments and so forth. But all prophecy is for us. Upon whom the ends of the world have come, friends. And to anoint the most holy. Oh, when was the, the most holy ever really anointed? Because obviously he's talking about bringing in righteousness and anointing the most holy, the real one. Well, it didn't happen at the end of 490 years in that case. Why? Because there's this other last three and a half years that are at the consummation. And we don't know when that's going to happen. We have to ask the Lord, when will that happen, oh Lord? And he'll say, well, when you catch sight, 
of Jerusalem coming back, the fig tree blossoming, that race or that nation will not pass away. A generation is 60 and 70 years and 80 if they're mighty. So it can't go beyond that. And when you catch sight of that city, Jerusalem, being fully made the capital of Israel again, and there is their sanctuary lying desolate, what will happen next, Jesus? Well, the Antichrist will come and declare himself to be the deity and enter into the most holy, which is both physically possible without rebuilding the entire temple. You can even have a tent, which is what they're doing over there. You see, that physical temple is not the most holy. So they cannot build a temple and make a most holy and cleanse it and give anybody righteousness or, or, or favorability or anything. It's a fraud. It's an abomination to our Heavenly Father's way of thinking. It's murder. Your father's the devil. He's a liar. He's a murderer. From the beginning, you hypocrites, you idiots, your house is left unto you desolate and that abomination that you're going to pull over there, it's going to cause you absolutely forever and ever, not one stone upon a stone. All this system that you think is going to save you is going to be over. Not one trace of it will remain. And I saw a mountain burning with fire and it fell into the sea and a third of the sea became blood. And that begins the great tribulation. That mountain, there's only two, the mountain of the Lord and the mountain of the devil, the summer solstice and the winter solstice. And that mountain is the mountain, not Mount Zion that the Lord has chosen, but it is their Mount Sinai with their lawgiver. The, the deity of vengeance is the governments of this world that was offered to Jesus and he rejected it. And that mountain, that mountain of Jerusalem, that the physical mountain in Saudi Arabia that is in bondage with her children, the apostle Paul says, will be thrown into the sea in the month of April of 2024, if we're not mistaken. But it's because it's really happening in the spiritual, because Satan is coming down from heaven to deceive the entire inhabited earth. Woe unto the earth and for the sea. The devil has come down to you. So he says, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. So he's saying, there's this 490 year period I'm going to tell you about. Everything except the last three and a half years is going to lead up to Jesus, the Messiah. And it's going to tell you things that he's going to do. Get rid of sacrifices, bring in everlasting righteousness, seal up the prophecy and the vision. Seal it up until when? Till the time of the end. So it says in three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. Okay, so that's three score, 20, 40, 60. And two weeks, 62 weeks. So there'll be 62 weeks of years from the time that they, the 70 years is over of the original 70 years of desolation, which is now going to start a 490 year cycle because they paid 70 for 490. So there has to be 490 years of sin and they send it and, and filled up their sins when they murdered Jesus. So they got 490 years from the call of Cyrus to re restore Jerusalem. And historians have said this comes down to around about the time that Jesus was baptized. Because then there's a the last week and Jesus spends three and a half years from the time he's baptized. He has a three-year mission, ministry, and then he dies. And then we're waiting for him to return. The last three and a half years is going to bring in the Antichrist because when, when the Messiah is cut off, then there's the prince who is to come who makes himself deity. That's not the Messiah. It's very clear that the covenant that this prince makes, that this Messiah or this anointed one makes is, the, is a good covenant from our heavenly father because that's the word that's used. The covenant, like the holy covenant. See, that's why they call it the holy covenant. So the Antichrist doesn't make a holy covenant. That's not what it says. It's not the, 
it's not the Antichrist making the covenant. Jesus made the covenant, the new covenant. The Antichrist, though, is the abomination. So he's going to enter into the hearts or into the sanctuary as the abomination. The Antichrist doesn't come and make a covenant and renege on it. That's something that's false, as we've said several times now. But to reiterate, Jesus makes the covenant. Jesus takes away sacrifices and gift offering, and they ceased. Jesus sealed up the vision. It was Jesus that brought in everlasting righteousness. Now, the prince who is to come is what Jesus meant when he said, watch out before I come back, before I come back. I've been here. I'm going to come back. But you're going to see this Antichrist and they're going to surround Jerusalem and then it's going to be desolated beyond anything. It's going to be completely destroyed. Not one stone will be left upon a stone. Right now, there's still stones over there where they're banging their head up against it. So that hasn't actually been fulfilled yet. Contrary to what most people say, there will not be any more of this old Jerusalem. Not one trace of it. You won't even find a shred because it's symbolic of that no more will human beings be accused by Yahweh. People just can't understand that Jesus was saying you are condemned. Jerusalem, the law, it's all bad. Your father is the devil. He is a liar. But David, but David, it says in Revelation, only those who keep the commandments of God. It doesn't say the commandments of Yahweh, does it? Well, well, no, it doesn't. It says the commandments of Jesus' father. And Jesus told you what those commandments were. Love one another. Look at Acts chapter 7 if you want to understand this. And get off your high horse. And understand if you're under the law, you're under a curse. And you are under the wrath, my friend. You need to look at it again. So it says, Jesus is cut off after the 60 and two weeks, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city. We don't want to confuse the, the people of the prince who will come with the Messiah. This is what a lot of these people, modern people are doing, saying, oh no, Jesus can't come back yet. We haven't built the temple. We got a long time. No, 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 no. We don't need another temple. It's going to be destroyed. We're talking about the sanctuary here, not the temple. So it says, the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. When is that, Lord? When shall these things be? Well, you know, you'll see in the latter days, Peter says, a day in the Lord's like a thousand years. He's not slow, but he's patient. It ain't going to happen right away. Paul says, now don't get quick shaken in mind as though you got a letter from us saying the end is you know come and, and the resurrection has already occurred. It will not come until the apostasy comes first. And what is the apostasy? The falling away in the latter days that Peter's saying is going to be thousands of years. And actually he said 2,000 years and we've showed you in countless videos now that he said thousand year twice. And if he quotes Psalms 90 which is talking about a day and a night. There's 2,000 years. But it says, he shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with a flood. Now you know what it means in Revelation where it says that the dragon made a flood go out of his mouth to destroy the woman. Here's the flood. And the flood, according to Jesus, is armies. A flood of armies. In fact, the Bible uses this term flood to represent armies quite a few times. And you'll also notice there's the overspreading wing of abomination. You know, like people, don't, what is a wing? Well, just like flood means armies, a wing means one branch or like usually a, a bird has two wings. So there's left and the right, you know, F like flank or, or some sort of arm or something, right? But an arm that's coming from the sky. Well, the arm or the overspreading of this wing or this aspect 
of abomination is what that's talking about. But it is under the end of the war, desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant, who? He, going back to the Messiah, shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. In the midst of the week, he shall cause sacrifice and oblation to cease. Jesus did that by the death of his own body. And for the overspreading of the abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, which is what? Well, we wouldn't know if it didn't keep telling us over and over again, the end of everything will be 1,260 days. That's the consummation to bring this vision of 490 years to a close, the last three and a half weeks of Daniel's 70th week. And that which is determined shall be poured out upon the desolate. It ain't coming back, friends. There ain't going to be no rebuilding of the temple. All there is going to be is that which is determined. It will be poured out upon that city. And it will be absolutely, utterly destroyed. So now Daniel in chapter 12 will give you like a focused expansion of the last three and a half years. And he says that that last three and a half years will be the end of the world. And he says, and at that time shall Michael which means the one who is like El, will stand up the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. Jesus quotes that and he says, no flesh would be saved but on account of the chosen ones. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Everyone, who's thy people? Talmudic Jews? No, friends. You've got to understand, the Messiah has made a new covenant, renewed it. Everyone that should be found written in the book, and many of them, and the only way to get written in the book is to be righteous, and the only way to be righteous is through Jesus, friends. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame, and an age-long contempt. Okay, so... There is reincarnation. Some people come back into a body and they will be condemned and pay for their karma and bad things they've done. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Friends, I'd get to trying to preach the gospel as much as you can and loving one another as fast as you can so that you can be one of those stars that bring the many to righteousness. And shine forever and ever. And verse 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. Oh, you see. <laughs> to bring in. Christ comes then and is cut off. To seal up the prophecy. Now it's, we're just waiting for it all to be fulfilled. And Daniel says that the words are shut up. Until the time of the end, friends. That's why there's this whole long period in between. The last half of Daniel's 70th week. And many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Oh, buddy, that's the day we're living in. Many have run to and fro, and knowledge has been increased. Well, Dave, they could, you know, that could be any time, right? That could be 1800s. Yeah, but unbeknownst to them, things got a little bit more running to and froer, and the knowledge got a little bit more increased. Quite a bit. You say, well, it'll get more increased down the road, Dave. No, we're at the end, friends. I'm sorry. If you can't see that, you're blind. And verse 5, Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, the one on the side of the bank of the river and the other on that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen, Do you know what the man clothed in linen does? You read it in Ezekiel. He puts a seal in the heads of all the children who are sighing and groaning over this present world, who don't like it who hate this wicked world and won't participate. And this man with linen and a writer's inkhorn makes a mark on the forehead of those who are sighing and groaning. It's the seal of the living deity. So you don't just get the mark of the beast. That's it. There ain't no other mark. Now there's another mark. And that's the Holy Spirit. So you, you, that tells you what the other mark is. It's idolatry. It's worshiping government man-made, demonic, vengeance, 
the law of Moses upon your hand, your forehead, vengeance. But the seal of the Lord is love. It says, I belong to the father of Jesus Christ, the deity of love. And the man clothed with linen was upon the waters of the river. How long shall it be unto the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed with linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven. I mean, he's, he, he's serious about this. He didn't just raise his right hand, but he raised up his left hand as well. And he swear by him that liveth forever and ever, that it shall be for a time, a times, and a half a time. In other words, a year, two years, and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, because he's going to have power over the saints, friends. There's nothing to do with Judeans. He's going to have power over the saints, the apostles say. And he's only going to have 1,260 days. All these things shall be finished. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed until the time of the end. And many shall be purified and made white and tried. But the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. Friends, are you one of the wise? I really hope so. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and thirty five days. But go thy way, Daniel, till the end be. For thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of days. I keep telling you, friends, we're in the day of judgment. And that means we're all going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And we're all here. That's why there's 8 billion people on the earth. Now, one last thing I want to point out because we're getting close to an hour for today because I got I want to cover some more stuff probably in another video about this uh, sign of Jonah, you know, where the, the people are talking about the, the April 8th eclipse. I think it's important, but we'll talk about that. But one of the most crucial things that we've been discussing today that's, that's crucial to our understanding of when this is going to be is whether it, the three and a half years begins the Great Tribulation in spring or in fall because if it begins in the spring it has to, I think, ought to be this year as we've just covered. Was well, there any other proof? Well, aside from the fact that the temple must be dedicated in the spring and it will be destroyed on the 9th of Ab, which is around August sometime. And it's always, that's just the way that is. And that's the only way they could bring in the Antichrist in this. And, and, and we've covered now how at the half of the week, and so we've shown that. But understand that it's three and a half years. And Daniel himself is telling you that Jesus died at the half. So it must mean that Antichrist returns in the spring because it's a continuation from when Jesus died at the half of the week. And remember, we, Jesus died at Passover in the spring. So the Antichrist then takes it up from there and we continue the last half of the week. It starts in spring. There is no question whatsoever the Great Tribulation will begin in April, either this year or, if you could stretch your imagination, perhaps it'll be next year or something like that. Maybe we don't understand some of this. Maybe we're missing something. But I strongly suggest you take it seriously and keep waiting and watching. I believe the Great Tribulation may start in this April time, I know that Klaus Schwabi, Bobby, Wabi, and all the others have said in their little round council and their denunciation and their proclamation to the world, you will own nothing and love it. They have said that before 2025, there's going to be a cyber attack. And, but look, first of all, why are they telling us this? 
maybe to throw us off. Maybe it will come in an hour in which you know not. But if it begins in spring, that's probably when the banks collapse. And that only gives you six months before the year 2025. And so they are telling the truth that something's going to happen to the bank and the internet before 2025, sometime in 2024, friends. And we also got to cover, maybe in tomorrow's video, that what actually happens in spring is more than just, you know, the introduction of the Antichrist, the Great Tribulation, but a great mountain falls into the sea. We talked about that. That's this old Jerusalem. So it will be hit. Now, remember, there's going to be a third of the sun that will not shine. People are talking about maybe this eclipse. I think that might be a sign, but it's not the reality. The sun's got to be darkened for a third of the day, and eclipses don't last that long. In times past, and we'll discuss this tomorrow, but in times past, that has something to do with the smoke that comes up out of the bottomless pit that darkens the sun. And that smoke happens when a mountain on fire falls in the sea. If this happens in any literal situation on earth, it could be volcanic. It could be, sounds serious, right? With a huge mountain falling into the sea and, and the bottom of the pit being open, but it might also be nuclear. And I'll explain to you tomorrow on why that might be a nuclear fallout or something of that nature. And of course, that would mean there could be a nuclear attack upon Jerusalem in April. And it might also be on Washington. It could be on the Vatican. It could be in London. Remember, she has many seats. She's just upon seven mountains. But she will be cast into the sea, this old harlot, this old Jerusalem, the mother of the harlots, and it will burn her with fire. I'm going to go ahead and go. I hope you have a wonderful evening. We'll see you tomorrow for part two. And the Lord will bless you. See you tomorrow.